Cruise Radio is brought to you in part by TripInsurance.com. Travel insurance done right by the people who know travel insurance. Get a quote today at TripInsurance.com. Here we go. Broadcasting from the TripInsurance.com studios in Jacksonville, Florida, this is Cruise Radio. So Christy just returned from a eight-night cruise out of Manhattan on Carnival Magic. It went down to San Juan, Grand Turk, and I can't read my writing. Was it St. Martin, Christy? St. Thomas. St. Thomas. I have like S chicken scratch. So very good. (laughs) Welcome back to the show. Glad to be here. So I know we talked to you uh, a couple of months ago about your cruise on Carnival Legend out of Baltimore. Here you are again. You sailed out of New York City, your hometown port, because you live right there in the city. What made you want to take this eight-night cruise to um, the Caribbean out of New York, just because of proximity to the port? Yeah, that and it was actually my sister's idea. Um, We're both teachers, and... Her school year actually ended a little earlier than mine this year, but her birthday is at the end of June. And she had received an offer for a few days after her birthday. It was out of New York, no need to fly. Um, She thought it would be a great way to end the school year. I agreed. And so so we went for it. Are you just like a 10-minute ride to the cruise port from where you are? Uh, 15. Okay. It was about 15 minutes. It was, it's pretty quick. I mean, unless there's traffic. Gotcha. So you make your yeah. way to the cruise port at the Manhattan Cruise Terminal. How was embarkation for you? It was pretty smooth. I was nervous because I had read, I guess, the first couple of sailings out of New York um, were kind of really slow moving. And so we had an early check-in time. We had a 1030. And um, we actually wound up getting there even a little earlier. I had just checked the... Um, timestamps on my pictures. So it looks like we got there at 10.03. Um, we, we, there was no line. We, we got to kind of walk right up. We used Verify. That was super easy. And then we were seated and waited for a good hour till um, they started calling boarding. So it was smooth, but there was, a, there was still a wait. Um, and we walked on board at just after 11.30. Okay. Uh, or just, or maybe it was just after eleven twenty. But in any case, it was about an hour and a half. Um, no waiting in lines, just a lot of sitting, waiting in chairs. So you make your way on board. What were your first impressions? So <laughs> very first was like, why are we entering on deck one or two, <laughs> <laughs> wherever we are, with all of these state rooms around? <laughs> um, I thought we were going to, you know, enter into the atrium or something, but we didn't. So, um. We actually had cabins on deck too. So we were like, all right, let's go see where, you know, we got to walk through here anyway. Let's go see where it is. And then we decided to go do our muster, um, which was all the way on the other end of the ship. As we were looking for our muster station, we were kind of exploring all of the, you know, common areas and taking pictures. And I just kept saying how beautiful it was. Um, I think it's, it's really a gorgeous ship. I, I love the color scheme and, um, I was really, really happy with all of that. Um, And I was like, wow, this is great. I I can't wait to do it again. Mm -hmm. Um, Just off of those first impressions. So first impressions just based on, you know, um, like aesthetics was great. You were on deck two, you said. What kind of stateroom did you have? And how was it throughout your week of a voyage or your eight night voyage? Well, that was that was interesting. So we wound up with an ocean view F kind of right on the corner, um, on the back corner of the ship. So that was, the, that was fine. It, you know, I, the location was fine. Um, the view was interesting. I actually liked that. The room itself, because it was on the corner, was small. It was smaller than, um, like, there was only one closet. It was smaller than we were used to. Um, that aspect of the room was fine. The biggest issue we had with the room was something was wrong on deck two. And there was a really horrible odor in the corridor from about like mid aft toward the aft. And it only got worse as the week progressed. We would smell it in the hallway and be completely disgusted and then get into our room and be so happy that at least it didn't smell in our room. But about midway through, it did start to kind of creep its way there too. Never got it resolved. I mean, plenty of people spoke to us about it and... Some agreed, some tried to say that they didn't smell anything or that it was like a brand new smell. 
Um, but a lot of people on the floor were aware of it and not happy about it. When I first walked on the legend, I think I remember saying like we were hit in the face with like a sewered smell and it was like not great. Mm -hmm. This was exponentially worse than that smell. I, I can't even explain what it was. Um, I'm hoping it's been cleared up. Was it like that, a sewage type smell or was it like paint it, fumes or something? No, no, it was a sewage type smell, but it was like worse than any other that I've smelled before. Like it was, it was horrendous. Other than that, the room. Okay. <laughs> other than that, the room was fine. Yeah. Temperature was great. You know, I mean, it was a little small, like I said, but temperature was great. You know, everything was um, fine. I was a little worried because I had heard people saying, you know, in those rooms all the way in the apps that you can hear a lot of like noise or vibrations and other than like some vibrations when I think we were docking, it wasn't a problem. And honestly, I felt the same vibrations like on deck 11 in the same area. So um, that was fine. Okay. Well, let's talk about dining on this eight night cruise. We'll start at the top at the Lido Deck Marketplace. How was the food up there? It was hit or miss. This is actually the first cruise that I actually did have a few meals in the like Lido buffet area. Um, I had like a great lunch one day. There was some really good jerk chicken and rice. Um, and then, you know, a couple of times we had dinner up there and it was average. Nothing that I would say was fantastic, but nothing that was horrible either. Had the deli a couple of times, which was good. I feel like that's always pretty consistent. I think, I mean, we hit almost everything. I, the only thing I didn't try was the walk, just because it's not really my favorite type of food. But, you know, we had some Guy's Burgers, which were good. Definitely had some blue iguana. I was a little disappointed that they didn't have any of the taco shells, because mm -hmm. I like a, a bowl in those, but they didn't have those on the sailing. We even tried lunch upstairs in Cucina one day. We we did have a reservation for dinner, but that wound up getting canceled. And we tried the seafood shack one evening, uh, which I thought was fantastic. It was the first time I had tried that. And I thought they were some of the best fried clams I'd ever had, actually. Yeah. Um, and I would definitely do that again. Lobster rolls were pretty good. Um, we had a lot of pizza. My sister loves the pizza mm -hmm. on the ship. So we, we had a lot of late night pizza. <laughs> Nice. So I would say everything up there, you know, like, like I said, the buffet was hit or miss, but it was, it was pretty good overall. And how about the main dining room? What time dining did you have and how were your dinners in there? They were good. They were few, actually. We, um, we had the your time dining and we actually only wound up eating in the main dining room three times. One of those, we actually had like comp steakhouse selections, which we didn't even know about. So we had that one night. The other two, like we ate there on the last night because I always feel like we should eat there on the last night. Um, and I would say it was very consistent with all of my experiences in like the main dining room on their other ships. The one thing that was interesting, which was brand new to me, there were two days that they had lunch in the main dining room. Hmm. Um, and they were you know, different menu items. I had never seen them before. We, we only went once. Um, we didn't go the first time. The first time was the day we were in San Juan. And I'm guessing it's because it was a very late port day. We didn't get there till like four. And then the second time they had lunch was on our second to last or our last sea day. Cause we had a total of four sea days. Okay. Um, so that was interesting. Um, kind of exciting to see something brand new like that. Um, and it was good. I would do that again for sure. It was a nice um, alternative to everything up on Lido yeah. when you've been there for an extended period of time. For some reason, I thought that they, maybe they don't on longer cruises um, do a sea day brunch every sea day, but maybe not. Well, they had that too, oh, okay. which was really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So they had the normal sea day brunch, but it was ending at noon, which I think was also kind of an adjustment due to the staff shortages. Mm -hmm. Um. And then I'm trying. So the day we were in San Juan, there was no sea day brunch because it was technically a port day. Yeah. And they had the lunch. But then I'm trying to, they might, maybe they didn't do sea day brunch on that last sea day when they had a lunch. Maybe they did the lunch instead, but like a port day breakfast. I know it was open every morning. So it was really, it was different. It was I'd never seen it before. Throughout your sailing, did you ever find out how many people were on board your ship or what the capacity was at? We were told full, okay. pretty much. 
So um, I never asked specifically, but um, I know people were trying to change rooms and even, you know, book last minute and get rooms. And we were told it was full and it felt full Mm -hmm. for sure. How was the entertainment on this eight night sailing? I enjoyed it. Um, There were, we saw, well, there were, I believe, four playlist production shows. We didn't see the first one, which was a country theme, but we did see Flick, um, America Rocks, and 88 Keys, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I thought they were all really enjoyable. I thought they were well done. I think um, 88 Keys might have been my favorite out of those. I think they did a really, really nice job with that. There was also one night that they had like a, a one woman artist okay. who sang um, like women of the sixties and she was phenomenal. I think her name was Martina long and she was, she was really fantastic. Like I, I wish she had more than one night of a show on the ship because she was really, really great to watch and listen to. Um, we never made it into the piano bar. We did get to comedy one night and I wish we had done it more than one night because I, it wasn't the best comedy show I had been to. Um, so, and I usually love the comedy, um, but this one I felt was a little lacking, um, but we never made it back to any of the other ones. Um, and I, I don't really even do too much of like the deck parties right now. So we didn't even experience any of that, but we did enjoy um, like the music in the atrium and the music in the ocean plaza a few times. Those were really nice too. Sounds like you made the rounds though, at least. We tried to, yeah. we tried to. Well, how about the sea days as far as crowds and congestion? The sea days were crowded. Um, we, so we are not big fans of sitting in the sun all day anymore. Mm-hmm. So that's lucky for us because you couldn't really find seats um, like on Lido or even right above Lido. We did usually get pretty lucky finding them on, I believe it was deck five where they have like the outdoor kind of lanai area. Um, But even those areas would get crowded during the day, um, especially with the hot tubs out there, which, I was initially very excited about, but never even got the opportunity to go in because they were always so crowded. Uh, The day we came in from Grand Turk, um, it started like kind of raining, maybe almost storming. So everybody started to come back onto the ship and the back pool area was still kind of empty. So I did get to use the hot tub that day, which was nice. Um, But it it was definitely crowded. We wound up um, using the casino a lot on sea days to avoid the crowds. Mm -hmm. Um, And then also the Ocean Plaza had, you know, they had a lot going on there as far as like the trivia and the games. You would just have to make sure that you got there pretty early to get a seat. Um, I do wish, I mean, it's, it's big. I just wish it was even a little bigger, that area for the size of the ship. Yeah. Um, but if you, you know, if you could get there early enough and didn't mind, you know, sitting down for a while waiting, like I would just go grab something from the coffee shop and hang out until they got started. And then, you know, we could play our Harry Potter trivia or Mm -hmm. I think we did like Billy and Elton, you know, a couple of things like that. So that was fun. Let's talk about your ports of call. You did three of them on this one. And, um, I guess what we'll do here is give us the port, give us a highlight, and we can move to the next one. I'll start with San Juan. I'll just go in order. Like I said, this one, it was weird because we got there so late. and I. But I actually think that might be the highlight was sailing into port, you know, like in mid-afternoon because it really was some incredible views. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we were out there for a while for sailing, and we had a great time just kind of taking that all in. But otherwise, you know, I'll, I'll go for a highlight actually off the ship, which was just exploring old San Juan. Uh, You know, we walked around for a bit, um, had dinner, went to one of the restaurants in old San Juan and had some bofongo and um, maybe like a salad. I, what, what I really wanted, they were actually out of. So like a little, but we, you know, we, we had a second choice. So that was good. Can't wait to go back there for a more extended period of time, which hopefully I'll be doing in a couple of weeks. And then the next port was St. Thomas. We didn't have the best weather for St. Thomas, 
we were like, should we, shouldn't we? But we did. And our highlight, we did the uh, Par- Paradise Point, I think it's called. Mm-hmm. The one that's closest to the, the where you go up and have the bushwhackers. It wasn't the banana daiquiri one. It was the bushwhacker one. So we went up there and that was fun. The sky ride was, a, a, I had to really distract myself. It was a little scary for me. Okay. Um, but I would call it a highlight for sure. I think Megan's Bay would have been the highlight if, the weather was a little nicer, but it was completely gray the whole time we were there. So you know, we went to the beach for maybe an hour tops. And then we didn't want to drive back over the mountain in thunderstorms. Mm-hmm. And it looked like they were coming in. So we left early. And then um, Grand Turk was our final stop. Um, also got in there kind of late. We got in there around one. And the highlight for me there was the beach for sure. I love I just love the Caribbean beaches in general. Like I just want to be in those like ocean waters all day long. Yeah. We walked a little past the crowds. I, we didn't really want to be right off the ship where it's real crowded. Um, and we actually, I had never been to Grand Turk before mm-hmm. and I really wanted to go to Jack's Jack because I've heard such great stuff about it, but we went on their website and it said they were closed. So we didn't go quite as far. And then we found out afterward that they were actually open. <laughs> oh, geez. So, so again, hopefully we'll uh, get to try that out in a couple of weeks. But um, definitely the beach there. It was fantastic. It was a lot of seaweed that day, mm-hmm. but just kind of like swam past it. And then, I mean, the water was great. So yeah. definitely loved it there. Yeah, it's beautiful down there. And were you all the only ship in port? We were the only ship in all three ports. Nice. Yeah. So that was very nice. So you make your way back to Manhattan. How was your debark process? That was a little frustrating. Um, <laughs> it was it was slow, and it was a lot of. Uh, for the first time ever, we actually decided to do self assist because I live right there. It's not like, you know, sometimes when I'm in Florida, I don't have a flight till later in the day, so I'm not really in a rush to get off the ship. Mm-hmm. But this was like I could just get off and get home. So we decided to, you know, go for the kind of the earlier and take our stuff off, but. Um, it was really slow, really slow calling those zones. Yeah. And then what we realized was nobody was really listening to them. Everybody was kind of just going whenever they wanted to. And so after about a good 45 minutes of just like sitting by the stairs and waiting and like hearing all of the commotion that was going on, we just kind of peeked around the corner and saw like this huge line and we just got in it and we went because it was just like building and building. And I decided that I probably wouldn't do that again. And I would just stick with getting those luggage tags and just kind of waiting it out. Yeah. The Carnival Magic has had a few brawls on it over the summertime. (laughs) Was it a pretty tame uh, crowd during your voyage? Um, Well, there were no brawls that I am aware of, but I would say it was, it was rowdy. It, Mm -hmm. It was definitely rowdy. Um, I think a large, a large, uh, portion of like the, the rowdiness, I I feel like I need a better word there, but I'll keep using that one is really, there were a lot of teenagers on the ship Mm -hmm. and I work with teenagers. I'm a high school teacher. You know, I love them. That's great. I can deal with them. But on this particular sailing, there were a lot of really, uh, rude, rude things taking place. Just yeah. a lot of, it was, it was very frustrating. I mean, there was, uh, one person I was talking to who actually was kind of like, um, her father was organizing a lot of the stuff for our Facebook group. And mm-hmm. he has like a, a motorized chair. And she told me that like a group of kids tried to steal it. Jeez. And that was just so disappointing to hear. But it, not but and it was also the perfect example of just kind of what we were seeing all over the ship like you know kids just i don't i don't care if we're not old enough we're going to go in serenity anyway like who cares what they say to us and yeah. spitting and you know the 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 language the cursing the screaming all over the ship i mean just really it was a lot of just rudeness really just to kind of put it nicely yeah, that's sad. 
Yeah, it was. It was sad. And it, it definitely put a damper on it for a lot of people. Um, I tried to just say, well, this is still like my trip and I want to enjoy it. So I'm just going to kind of stay away from it all and yeah. ignore it. But, you know, when it's in your face, it's, it's a little hard to always ignore it. Yeah, no, 100%. Well, let's see yeah. here. Looking back on this trip, actually, you know what? We'll back up and do. Um, do you have any first time tips to offer anyone either sailing a Southern Caribbean voyage from New? I guess they're really not Southern, so I'll retake that for the third time. And I'll say, um, do you have any first time tips to offer anyone sailing to the Caribbean from New York or sailing on Carnival Magic? Um, I would say either way. Probably pack your patience for sure. Um, definitely worth doing, especially like, you know, if, if the circumstances are right and the price is right and you want to do it, go for it. Um, I've been looking at the magic sailings for next summer and it seems to be the same itinerary again. So definitely look at those ports and port times and make sure that you're okay with them because that can be disappointing. If you're not aware, I was well aware of it all. So we had kind of planned appropriately. Um, but I, I know I do like to be there, you know, earlier and longer. So I would say be prepared for that and pack your patience for sure for, you know, getting on and off the ship, especially at the ports. Um, and then just even when it's crowded and we were, you know, we were a full ship, so it was crowded. Like sometimes you have to wait in line for yeah. a guy's burger, you know, and it might be a 15 minute line, but it's, it's not the end of the world. You're going right. to get it. Right. Yeah, it's going to go. Um, you, I, as long as you're kind of prepared for all of those things and understanding that if you cruised last August mm-hmm. and got a little spoiled, yeah. you know, it's, it's really not like that anymore. Cause I, I, I did cruise last August and then again in February and you know, that was a little more crowded and now it's like, Oh, okay. We're, we're back to reality now. Yeah. First cruise back, there were 27% capacity on the ship I was on, and now they're like all over 100%. So I was like, okay, right. <laughs> I got really spoiled. Yeah. yeah. Um, what was the biggest highlight of this cruise for you? Being on it, honestly, I mean, it was it was just so great to, and it hadn't even been that long, but I was so excited to do it again. Um I, but I think, uh, to give you an actual answer, new ports, for sure. Mm. All three were new ports for me. I am very excited to go back to all of them. Um, I am going back to San Juan and Grand Turk in a couple of weeks. I don't have anything lined up for St. Thomas again, so um, really have to get that in there. But the new ports were definitely a highlight for me. Very cool. Looking back, your final thoughts of Carnival Magic. Final thoughts. Well, I'm going on it again. So even though there were some downsides overall, I mean, it was still, I had a great time. It was still mm-hmm. a great cruise. I still think it's a beautiful ship. I think the size, I, um, I like the size. I do think there were a few areas where maybe like the design wasn't the best, <laughs> um, kind of in the buffet. Um, but I would sail it again. I am sailing it again. Um, yeah, I was, you know, it was a good time. We've been talking with Christy about her eight-night Caribbean sailing on Carnival Magic out of New York City. Christy, as always, it's great talking to you, and thanks for sharing your review. No, thanks for having me. I love it. A big question we get at Cruise Radio is, how do I know if I need trip insurance? Simple answer. If you're getting on a plane, taking a road trip, or getting on a cruise ship, you need to have travel insurance. Hey, it's Doug Parker for my friends at TripInsurance.com. Not not only does TripInsurance.com protect your vacation investment, but it also gives you peace of mind in case anything were to go wrong on your trip. How do they do it? They offer three different types of trip insurance policies. Good, better, and best. One policy for every vacation budget. But it doesn't just stop there. They're up to 40% lower when you shop around on other comparison sites. Plus, TripInsurance.com offers 24-hour customer support before, during, and after your trip, online claims assistance, and travel alerts to let you know what's going on at your destination. But find out for yourself. Check out TripInsurance.com. All right, Dougie, let's see what we got for you, buddy. Cruise Radio is produced at the TripInsurance.com studios in Jacksonville, Florida. Get cruise news, ship reviews, and money-saving tips every Thursday on Cruise Radio.
If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the show. If you want to help spread the word, give Cruise Radio a five-star review. Find Cruise Radio where you listen to your favorite podcast or online at cruiseradio.net. I'm your announcer.